This lesson on our camera's focusing systems is critical. Something that a lot of beginning and intermediate photographers will struggle with is the complex way in the, that the camera focuses in how it does it and where it does it. And it's very confusing if you are not familiar with the camera. Our camera has 51 focusing squares, three different focusing modes, and it also has six focusing groups, which I also refer to as clusters. The easiest way to remember how all of this works is to break it down into the how the camera focuses, when the camera focuses, and the where the camera focuses. How, when, and where. If you can remember these three things, it's going to be easy. Now, as I already mentioned on the external buttons video, the camera is going to have its auto focusing mechanism engage when we push the shutter button halfway down. And this is true for whatever focus mode we are in. So how do we focus? We push the shutter button halfway down. Let's talk about when the camera is focusing. And if you don't have your camera, I would recommend getting it right now and following along. What we're going to do is push our focus mode selector button. There's a little button on here. We're going to push this in and look through the viewfinder. Now we can change our focusing modes on the back LCD as well as the top LCD, but I don't recommend doing it that way. I recommend doing it by pushing your mode selector and looking through the viewfinder. Now something you're going to notice immediately is that we have some letters on the bottom of our screen here. On the far left, you should see something that says AFA or AFS. These are our focusing modes. Now when you hold this down and rotate your command dial or your thumb wheel, you're going to notice that these modes change. Okay, so you should see AFA, AFS, AFC. And this is the best way to change your focusing modes. Let's talk about what they do. AFS stands for Auto Focus single servo. And what that means is when you push the shutter button halfway down, the camera is going to focus one time. If you push the shutter button halfway down and hold it, the camera will get focus lock and it'll stay locked as long as you're pushing that shutter button halfway down. Okay, this is going to be very useful for shooting portraits, still subjects, landscapes, things that don't move. Okay, so go ahead and look through your viewfinder, push your autofocus mode button down again, and we're going to change it now to say AFC. AFC stands for autofocus continuous, and what this means is that the camera is going to be focusing over and over and over again as long as you're holding your shutter button halfway down. Continuous focus is best for moving subjects such as crazy little kids, pets, animals, wildlife, things that are moving. Anything that's moving, you are going to want to use AFC because it's going to be continually focusing and refocusing. It's a predictive focus that helps kind of guesstimate where our subject is going to be when we push the shutter button all the way down to take the picture. It's very useful. Now the third mode, AFA, fortunately, is a hybrid of the two other modes. AFA stands for autofocus automatic. What this means is the camera is going to jump back and forth between the single and the continuous modes. This AFA mode is best for shooting events. So if you're a wedding photographer or you're shooting a birthday party, this is probably the best one to use. In fact, this is what I recommend for beginners because it gives the camera permission to, you know, if, if you're shooting a still subject, it's going to go with AF. S, single. If the kid starts running, then it's going to switch over to servo. When I shot weddings, this is what I would use because I didn't want to have to mess with, you know, changing my focusing modes. Sometimes the bride would be walking and then she would stop and then she'd be dancing and then she'd be stopped and then she would go running out to her car and then she'd stop. So yeah, if you're a beginner, start off with AFA. So those are your focusing modes. That is when the camera is focusing. Is it going to focus once when you push the shutter button halfway down or is it going to focus over and over? Let's talk about the where, the focusing clusters. So let's look through our camera again and we're going to push our autofocus mode button down and what I want you to do this time is to rotate your sub command dial which I also call the secondary selector 
And what you're going to see are different patterns of focusing squares. So these are the clusters, and there's six of them that I'm going to, going to talk you through. The first one, and probably the most important one, is a single focusing square. It's going to say S in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. I would say for the most part, 80 to 90% of the time, you are going to want to use the single focusing square. Now, something that's really cool about this is that we can use our directional pad to change the location of the square. And something that I love about the D7100 is that it has its focusing squares are very spread out. It's probably the most spread out focusing clusters I've ever seen on a camera. And this is going to be very useful when we're shooting something like portraits. Uh, traditionally, beginners like to take pictures of people dead center, and this isn't really a great way to do it. What I recommend for beginners is to follow the rule of thirds, place your subject either to the left or right on one of those one-third lines, put your focus square over them, push your shutter button halfway down, and this is really important, is to recompose as needed to make the picture look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Now, later on in the video, I'm going to show you an awesome portrait crash course that's going to go into this in more detail, but if you're shooting people, the halfway shutter depression and recomposing is extremely useful. It doesn't work on AF servo. Keep that in mind. So the single square, awesome because we can move it around. If you push the OK button, this guy right here, the center square will jump right back to the middle. And uh, yeah, you're going to be using that one most of the time. Let's take a look at some of these other focusing clusters. So I'm rotating my index finger. The next focusing type is D9, and it allows us to select nine focusing squares clustered together. You can also move these around to the left and right. D9 is going to be better for tracking uh, up close sports subjects. I don't use it a whole lot. Now D21 allows us to select uh, clusters of 21 focusing squares, and D51 selects all of the focusing squares. Essentially what we're doing is we're giving the camera permission to look in different areas if we lose focus. So what you're going to notice, let's say if we select D9, we see that, and we release our finger off the selector, we still have one square. Where the nine squares go? Essentially what's happening is we're giving the camera permission to look in the surrounding squares if we lose focus on that single square. D21 would expand this area, and D51 would open it up all the way, which I never use. After D51, we have the 3D mode, which is fantastic when it works right. Essentially what we're doing is we're giving the camera permission to change which focusing square is being used to track our subject. So if you have a moving subject and you get a focus lock on it, the square will actually follow it. It's a really awesome feature and I definitely recommend you try it out. The last focusing mode is auto and the automatic mode is something that I don't really recommend unless you are a pure beginner simply because it is going to pick the closest subject to you and focus on that. Any experienced photographer will tell you that's not always going to be what you're going to want to focus on but it's a nice crutch when you're first getting started. What I recommend for beginners is to start off on autofocus automatic mode with a single square. Practice moving around the square you are using and get a feel for getting focus lock and recomposing. If you're in a sports shooting situation, go ahead and flip it over to AFS and try the D9 cluster. Now a few tips I can give you, and this is maybe a little advanced, but you know, as you get more knowledge and skill, you're going to want to look into this, is that we have an AFL button, which stands for Auto Focus Lock. This is really meant to be used with the continuous servo mode. So if we're focusing on a sports subject that's moving and we want to freeze the focusing, stop it from focusing, you're going to push this thumb button. And it can also be customized as an Auto Focus On button. This is done in the menus, and I'll show you how to do this a little bit later. But what it does is it removes the halfway depression to focus 
to the back thumb button. So when you're taking a picture, you're going to focus, focus, focus on a continuous servo. And then when you're ready to take the picture, you would push the shutter button down all the way. So I know I've thrown a tremendous amount of information at you guys about the focusing systems, but it's really worth, you know, looking through your viewfinder, changing your modes and understanding when to use them. It's one of the top three questions I get from beginners is my pictures are blurry, camera's not focusing. It usually comes down to they're using the wrong mode or they have their lens switch turned to manual. In any event, that is your auto focusing systems. And I hope you enjoyed it. If you found this video helpful, you may be interested in my new crash course for the Nikon D7100. I'll teach you the basics and get you to shoot on a very advanced level in no time. Why go through all that hassle and frustration to learn on your own when you can learn from a pro? You can order it from the following link.